All right, thank you for staying with Daybreak. State of the Nation continues. We were discussing the health crisis. We'll get into the agriculture crisis and then the transport crisis in just a bit. And if time allows, we talk about the party primaries coming up. Let's see what you're saying in regards to the health, to the health crisis here. Yeah, let's bring that up on screen. General Lazaro says, competency of a leader can be tested during the time of crisis. Someone who can't even bring disgruntled KMPDU to a meaningful negotiation table is incompetent. Great Britain wartime leader Winston Churchill. Okay. Is associating that statement to Winston Churchill there. But what you know, you know, says Dan Manzo is being insincere, questioning about the CS Nakumicha's education background, yet he had an opportunity to raise it during the vetting process, and doctors don't want to be under county but national government. They are hiding behind the strike. Okay. Sir Nixon says last year the president scolded PSCs and PSs and CSs for being clueless over their dockets. Sadly, foolproof is here with us now. Delayed school capitation, and ending road accidents, fake fertilizer, medic strikes, etc. God help our government. And Dennis Ntumbi says that politicians can be too careful to breach party positions. It becomes an us versus them. Meanwhile, this is not a matter of government versus opposition. Why has parliament failed to establish a legal framework that protects the all the health workers, why is the legislation only pro-collection of revenue? All right. Let's talk about something else here. The agricultural crisis. And Dan Manzo, you start us off on this because you're in the agriculture committee. Y yes. This too, the NCCK says the CS should resign. How bad is the situation based on what you were told in the committee? Uh, well, um, just before I come to that, I want to indicate that, uh, you know, even if we do vetting, yeah. Sometimes information comes later, or presentation of fake documentation as to education. Yeah. So I believe Babu Owino will be following that up and will be tabling it. He has a lot of information against this uh, Nakumija minister. So we live in that now. Coming to agriculture, I'm the committee for agriculture, and uh, this matter was brought uh, to Senate. Uh, by the senator for Kakamega, uh, Honorable Boni Halwale, who yeah. brought a request for statement to be, you know, furnished as to the status, because a lot of these fake fertilizers had been found in, uh, in his county. And not only that county now, they've gone to Embu, it's gone to Meru, it's gone to Makweni. It is in quite a number of agricultural counties uh, in the country. And it is not just one type of fake fertilizer. There are quite a number of uh, fake fertilizers and um, the committee is going to go around all these places to to sample out to pick samples uh to to the to, to the counties themselves to go to nakuru county uh where where there is mining of diatomite and uh, all these places uh where fertilizers like one of one of the fertilizers was uh, uh, a mixture of you know donkey droppings with marrow, you know, soil. So, so, so you see, even the, the normal agriculture in Kenya, there is no time uh, a compost manure has been used from a donkey. People use cows and goats and that. So the, the, this is fertilizer which is valueless to the farmer. And when when you look at like the diatomite case, uh, where 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 Joe Kariuki, the owner of some company. Uh, 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 which was mining this diatomite. They said it has some use to certain soils in the country. They tried to give an explanation. Uh, and uh, and, uh, and uh, there are occasions it is used. But again, we want to blame the Minister of Agriculture. We should have extension officers who advise us on fertilizer. And it means this issue of fake fertilizers has been going on for a long time. You know, a, a bag of such fake fertilizer is going for 1,700, and probably a businessman has made over a billion shillings out of this which is totally valueless to the farmer. What happens with these rains? If you apply fake fertilizer, then it means your crop is going to be very poor. And it means uh, then, then this is like something against food security. Mm. Anything against food security is equated to terrorism to the country. And therefore, it's a very serious matter. Hence, the calling of the resignation of... Uh, my very good friend Linduri, uh, as much as he has worked very hard, he was the first one to deny that there is fake fertilizer. I believe he should have the best information as a minister for agriculture. And then they gave contradicting, uh, you know, uh, uh, statements with the permanent secretary in charge of crops. So, so it means uh, there's a problem in the Minister of Agriculture, which has to be sorted urgently. And the Minister of Agriculture also has historical problems 
has, has had problems for a, lo for a long time. There's a lot of, there has been a lot of corruption in that ministry uh, in, in relation to dealings, you know, with the produce and the fertilizers. And again, also, it is the same ministry uh, which, which, which you remember we, we, we had quite a number of issues uh, in, in relation to seeds. So, so it's not just fertilizer. Then when you have problems, fertilizer, then fake seeds, then it means with, without irrigated agriculture, really, mm. Kenyans are in trouble. And therefore, really, I want to call upon Honorable Rinduri, too, yes. who is a very brilliant legislator, and now a minister, to put this in order. And uh, uh, he, he's one man who, if he puts this right, yeah. we can spare. From the committee's perspective, is this widespread enough to justify a resignation or an impeachment of the CS? It's a big scam. Uh, fortunately, no one has brought an impeachment motion against the CS. You know, in an impeachment motion, you are able to lay uh, grounds. Uh, some of these things could be corrected, but it is a widespread scam. Yeah. It's so widespread that it must be stopped. It is reflecting the government in a very bad way. It's looking as if it's a fraudulent government. Okay. And unfortunately, in all these cases, the president has said nothing. We expect the president, who has been a minister for agriculture, to be on top of things yeah. uh, so that uh, we, we can be able to get quick resolutions. And these farmers who has been conned yeah. can easily be compensated with the real fertilizer because I believe there is real fertilizer also in the country. Okay. Uh, and uh, as, as experts must come, uh, so, uh, you know, in the Minister of Agriculture and uh, always make sure they vet the fertilizer which goes to the people. Okay. Mkwanja, is this a justification for resignation like the NCCK is calling for? I think I would want to agree with Honorable Manzo uh, on the use of impeach resign on, 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 on Honorable Nahumicha, the CS for Health. It is, for me, Linturi is a proper candidate <laughs> uh, for impeaching and resigning as Minister for Agriculture on this, on the, on the very basic reason. If it is proven that indeed there is fake fertilizer, and I come from the breadbasket of this country, Transoya, uh, last week, uh, I, I have uh, been out there uh, doing my bit to contribute to this uh, food security conversation by being on the farm. And, and, and therefore, what, if it is proven that actually there is fake fertilizer uh, and farmers are being supplied with maram and uh, donkey poop uh, and diatomite for agriculture, then Linturi should pack and go. My worry is this that majority, and, and with a lot of respect for the legislators here, majority of our legislators are out of depth on these issues. <laughs> and and, and, and the, such a CS will easily get away with these things. I can bet, uh, call us back with the Honorable uh, Manzo and uh, Senator Fobomet in a few weeks' time to see how much the committee, his committee, has done on this. I will tell you, there will be no progress. Um, and, and, and that is a very important thing because I, I am worried that the CS yeah. has basically uh, said something contradictory to the facts, something that could be found out and established. Um, Why do you think there will be no progress in Manzo's committee? I, I mean, we have seen this before, and you have seen that they have quickly concurred that even the impeachment against Honorable Nahumicha will be down to uh, numbers and such things, and not fairness and, 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 and objectivity of assessing the facts that are, you know, and, and, and that just has been the quality of, of this house. And it goes back to the quality of the citizen that we have, that if we look at ourselves in the mirror, is a, a clear reflection of who we are when we look at parliament. But let me leave it at that uh, for, for a lot of respect for the gentlemen that are here. Let, I think we had progressed from the Kibaki era to, I think, to a particular level where the issue of cost access and quality of farm inputs was not an issue, all right? But unfortunately, uh, Honorable uh, Sige's government wants to take us to the scenario where farmers are eating seeds <laughs> and, and, and not planting seeds. We need to deal with major issues in agriculture, issues of mechanization, issues of market access, issues of value addition. We cannot be retrogressing back uh, to the quality, cost, and, 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 and access to uh, farm inputs like fertilizer and seeds. It's very embarrassing. And this is one thing that we really expect the president uh, to take up and address. And he would do himself a very huge uh, justice if he actually asked Linturi if proven that this fake fertilizer in circulation to step aside on the mere fact that he has denied that there is no fake fertilizer and blamed it on opposition politics. Okay. Mr. Gay? Um, 
I, I want to first of all uh, allay fears uh, on the indictment of uh, the members of parliament and also even the committees in parliament by my brother here, Mugwanja. I mean, Senator Manzo is a seasoned uh, leader. If he was, as Mugwanja attempts to describe, he would not have been brought back the number of times that he's been a legislator. That's why he's saying is a reflection of the people elected. It is the not people, the case. People of Makwene are very different. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, Trevor, when, when you look at the kind of work that goes on in parliament and the kind of engagements that the members of parliament at the committee level undertake, it is exactly that which they are supposed to do. But where I want to defend them. Would you name now, one uh, shaking I mean, uh, result that came from a committee? That is, that is where the problem is. It's not the there. problem is that we would look forward to we would look forward to people being, you know, I, I mean, the are checking thing. A result. There the are want. so much things happening. The enactment of laws that goes on every day that sustains the running of a country happens in committees. So it, it's it's so it's so unfair for 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 my brother here to say there is nothing that will come out of this investing. We will come back here. Okay. We'll, we'll definitely come back here. We'll definitely come, we'll come back, back here. here. Because that is... I can run for a seat and become a better inflection. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have not said he, I will he not can, back. He can't do I'm, that. He, he I'm, I'm only <laughs> oversighting yeah. the oversighter. Yes. My, my conclusion is very simple. <laughs> that we'll come back here and see how far we made progress. Okay. It is and funding season, Trevor. I, 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 and and it, 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 it is one, it's one thing to allege... Numbers yeah. messes yeah. up. Okay. No, not even that, not even that, Manzo. Yeah. It is one thing to give an allegation against an individual. I, I liked the qualification is made that the mere fact that C.S. Linturi, for example, had, uh, you know, uh, outrightly said that there are no fake fertilizers in itself would warrant an action by the committee. But the rest of those allegations are subject to investigation. That is what exactly the committee is doing. Mm -hmm. They will go out there identify areas where the allegations pick up information that would stand the test of time. So let's not blanketly also say that the mere fact that uh, somebody has uh, made an allegation warrants a very hard breaking uh, thing because we also uh, a country ruled by law and procedures that same same person you are saying he should go home has a right to be given an opportunity to defend himself because he has a life beyond the position that he's currently holding so i would want to first of all say members of parliament are doing a good job the only unfortunate thing is we blanketly say statements which does not also you know, stand the test of time if they are to be scrutinized and investigations conducted appropriately. But will, number it, two, not, will it not boil down to the numbers question? Fine. Uh, not necessarily. Not necessarily. I come from an area where I survive uh, by, by farming. Remember, agriculture is one of the five pillars of Kenya Kwanzaa government. It is one of the five pillars that the Kenya Kwanzaa government said, should we sort this out, we'll be okay. For the very first time, I come from Bomet where, and in particular Chapalungu constituency, where there is no other agricultural activity that is done other than uh, maize, which for the last 10 years we haven't harvested. We actually harvested for the first time in 2024 and milk. Therefore, anything that will make my constituents go back to the hunger period where we didn't have anything to harvest, we could not get even any surplus to sell to get school fees. I'll tell you, Trevor, I will stand by that. And therefore, it is a conversation across our region and parliamentarians at large, because if we don't deliver on this agriculture, merely because of an individual who wants to sabotage, because remember, the introduction of this uh, subsidized fertilizer in the first place, must have killed a good number of cartels who were making money from the sector. Reducing it from 7,000 to 2,500 must have taken someone out of business. And they are therefore all over seeking to survive. And it's one of the ways with which we definitely will not do an entertainment beyond what we say is enough to sabotage uh, the position of the government. So we will definitely fight. And I'm very sure Manzo, however much he's uh, in, on the other formation politically, he will agree with me that this is one of the main things that will sort this country. If we sort the issue on food production, 
we will deal with a lot of problems. Okay. We will deal with it. And I'm, I'm so sure that they will come with a good report. If at all somebody is, is, is indeed uh, found to have participated, the way uh, Namu is telling us that a good number of politicians reached out to say, you know what, don't bring out this story. If the expose were to name individuals, why would we defend them? These are the same, same people who, if they can do this to a mere villager, you know, the person out there, two, three families normally would combine to buy a 50 kilogram of fertilizer because they are doing small scale farming. If such a person then would bring down such a family, who and why would I defend? I mean, I would have no moral uh, standing at all. Okay. And I believe that this is one of those things that we will fight it out. Okay. As to whether or not the president has spoken about it, he's got very competent people in leadership, all the way from the CS. That is why he's, uh, he's put them in office. Okay. We definitely wouldn't expect him to speak on each and every issue every day when he has got people in office. Okay. And therefore, I equally will uh, go back to the same statement. Is Linturi uh, a candidate for impeachment? Uh, I would say no. The investigations are ongoing by the committee. There is a directive that came from uh, P, uh, Prime Cabinet Secretary last week and the whole government approach on stoppage of distribution of these fertilizers to allow for the team by Manzo and other relevant government agencies conduct investigations and come out now with that earth-breaking uh, report yeah. which will action on ways to do with okay. this for the latest. All right, we have two more topics to go through, but once I'll allow you a chance to respond to this issue because it's your committee. We've been yes. uh, highly indicted on whether there's anything concrete that will come out of it, or you just do the usual trips around the country and then come back in the matter. In including uh, the issue of the distribution of this fertilizer. Yeah. It's one thing to have quality fertilizer, yeah. and another thing for the farmers to access it in time. And just, just to just uh, rejoin on it, yeah. the latest directive, uh, prior to the uh, directive on stoppage to pave way for this investigation, was actually an expansion of the distribution areas. On the 18th of February, remember Manzo when uh, the CS appeared before Senate, he gave a report to the effect that uh, on the 18th of February this year, that is uh, two months ago, they gave a directive that each word out of the 1,496 words in Kenya should give the ministry two uh, storage facilities powered to do what to facilitate distribution of this fertilizer to get closer to the farmer and also to reduce basically on the cost of uh, you know accessing this particular fertilizer okay. which is subsidized right. so uh, uh, it's something that had been done it's something that had been made available to the farmers okay all uh, over the country yeah, yeah, my, yeah. you know my committee will visit all these areas and take samples listen to experts and make a report. Now that report will be debated on the floor of the House and voted for or against. In that report, you can also now, you know, include the impeachment of a minister in that. You, you, you can censure the ministers using the same report, and especially if the report is against the minister personally. Mm -hmm. But again, any other individuals who have participated in one way or another, uh, sh should be mentioned and uh, appropriate action made and proposals such as prosecution. Uh, and uh, our report will also be very helpful to the relevant investigative bodies. So I'm expecting the DCI to be also doing their job in this and the ESCC because there's a lot of corruption in this. There should be all manner of, you know, things going on in relation to this investigation so that while Parliament does its work, yeah. DCI should also do their work and, and the ESCC should also do their work. Yeah. I believe uh, one of the other ways of getting this sorted out is first of all to stop the spreading, the, 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 you know, the giving out of uh, fake fertilizers, whatever it is detected to be fake, but uh, the Minister of Agriculture has a very serious responsibility to make sure that all these operations run correctly, and together with his officers, make sure that fake fertilizer doesn't get to farmers. I think the, the Minister has failed in that, and it's a high time it pulls his socks. Okay. Dennis Ndumbi here is challenging you. He says Parliament oversights the executive, so they can't play the victim. Every corrupt issue that the executive bears, Parliament is culpable of turning a blind eye to their role. Can Manzo demonstrate treat what he has done on the very grave issues being discussed. Parliament is an arm of government. Well, Parliament is an arm of government, and I want to admit and agree with him, the current Parliament has failed completely because of the so-called tyranny of numbers uh, and the rampant uh, corruption. Uh, as, as soon as the election took place, we were in a similar position as America. We had majority 
you know, opposition or, or majority as mayor, and we had minority, but people migrated. So finally, parliament votes. And the vote determines. It is up now to the, our employers, the people of Kenya, to know whether you will return similar members of parliament who are going to change their mind immediately they get to parliament, who are going to agree to be bought. Yeah. And the Kenyans get disadvantaged. And actually, most of these members of parliament never go back to their constituencies. Okay. They are only seen in parliament voting in a certain way or being called in PG meetings by the president and being given directions. Okay. So I want to agree currently parliament is a rubber stamp of the executive. Okay. We have have no parliament right now. We have the president making the law uh, and the parliament becoming a rubber stamp. We okay. have not I, made I, any law. I didn't say it. You had it from a member of parliament. <laughs> okay. Mukwanja, start us off on this. <laughs> NCCK also wants a transport CS, Kipchumba Murkomen, to resign as well over the increased road accidents. Yes, there's been an increase in road fatalities, about a thousand of them compared to last year. But this has been attributed to human error. How is this blamed on the CSs? Doorstep. I think this is where I agree that we are a little bit uh, trigger happy uh, when it comes to issues of impeachment. Um, and NCCK, if they uh, look at the facts clearly, um, it would go down to shifting our mindset and culture. Uh, if, if you look at the way Kenyans um, drive on the road, uh, I mean, uh, even it's on the expressway, uh, whereas you have no traffic, it's very clearly indicated uh, drive at these rates, but we always want to push uh, a mile from a centimeter, uh, which I think it's, it's something that we need to go back and, and, and see how are we uh, you know, training our drivers. Uh, how are we making sure that the behavior of change campaigns in the relationships between the law enforcers um, and, 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 and road users is, is actually uh, sorted? And I think it's a cultural issue because the work on the road, uh, the, the law enforcement of the road is, is almost, the engagement between road users and law enforcers on the road is almost a transactional issue. You know, you are at fault, and the most important thing is that you look for a 50 shillings uh, instantaneously so that your problem can be solved. I think it's a bigger problem than just asking uh, the CS for transport uh, to resign. Um, the other thing is the quality of our roads and, and the maintenance of the same. I mean, if, if a road is, is, is potholed, it's natural that you're going to try and swap. And if you're not uh, keen or the other driver is not keen, then you land in, in those uh, challenges. So for me, this is a bigger problem, that we need to have a more, uh, you know, better cultural shift, uh, possibly a more deliberate uh, design of a behavioral change campaign to ensure that uh, whether it's NTSA doing it, whether it's the traffic police doing it, issues of corruption are handled. Uh, issues of the obligation of the road user and the law enforcer. Uh, you know, if you go to other jurisdictions, for instance, there are clear measures. Uh, you don't even need a police officer on the road. That if a camera, a traffic camera, picks you out as offending uh, road traffic, you will get you know, uh, something in your mailbox yeah. uh, that you crossed Kenyatta Avenue uh, yeah. against these specific rules and please pay up. You don't even need to go to the court. Yeah. Uh, pay up. Uh, next time, uh, you will be reminded. The, the other time, possibly, could be your vehicle being towed yeah. whenever it is cited. You are not even human interfacing anywhere to allow those. So, so we just need to be more sober about this issue, mm -hmm. uh, look at ourselves, our behaviors. Uh, someone said that if you want to look at the discipline of a country, uh, look at their public transport. Yeah. Possibly we need to look at those issues much broadly yeah. than just uh, calling uh, CS Murukom and uh, to resign. I think this is one very unfair uh, one that I will not side with it and ask NCCK to look at facts better okay. than just uh, demanding the CS to resign. All right, CK. Um, my brother has put it well. Yeah. What factors play in the road sector? We've got the road itself, the condition, of our roads, we all know. Yeah. Whether it is on the highways or even in the other roads uh, under the county governments and their condition. We have got the driver, I and you. How disciplined are we when we are on the road? Do we uh, abide by the road safety regulations? Do we abide by the road signs? Do we abide by the speed limit? And all that. We have got now the road worthiness of the motor vehicles. 
that is one of the things that we would also say as at the point of permitting a motor vehicle to be driven on the road has it complied fully with the road within the standards has the entities uh, supposed to uh, undertake inspection done the right thing has it been that uh, it's now okay for it to be utilized on the road we've got the pedestrians and the passengers because when you look at the statistics as it now the leading uh, fatalities are actually among the pedestrians reason being either they are also not uh, using appropriate road signs or they just become victims of careless drivers along the road and same case applies to even passengers the second lot from the statistics after the pedestrians are passengers one of the questions that sometimes you would ask yourself is you get into a public uh, transport motor vehicle and, and and there is a driver driving who is on phone or who is drunk or who literally is careless because of one, two, three things, speed and all that. Because these are people who are on shift, for example. They want to run as many trips as possible to earn as much as they can. And you are seated as a passenger. What is it that you can do? So what does all these factors play? It plays out to what uh, my brother has said. Do we need to change the way we relate on the roads? whether as a road user, as a driver, as, as a passenger, as a pedestrian, as a law enforcement officer. Because unfortunately, Trevor, when you look at most of the speed limit areas, because like me, I use the Bomet Nara route almost every weekend. Um, there is a section, although they, they, I haven't seen them lately uh, for almost the last, I think, a month or so. But I used to, every other time I get there, there's a station called Tulele where they place the cameras. The business of this camera is to catch those who have, uh, you know, uh, gone beyond the uh, allowed speed. And it's got nothing to do with seeking to enforce. They ask is to catch, get a hold of you, make the money that you pay. The one uh, we're referring it to as a relationship that is transactional, and you go. It has not helped this person who was over speeding with a very high risk of killing many people to know that if I don't pay 200 today and I'm taken to court and I'm, uh, you know, uh, uh, found to have been guilty and therefore pay 10,000, next time I'll be uh, a lawful, uh, a compliant uh, driver. It doesn't help. Yeah. So that is also another aspect with which now, when you look at the Road Safety Action Plan 2023-2027, that was uh, rolled out, I believe, uh, last year. It speaks to all these issues. It speaks to each and every of these aspect. Yeah. We need to, because NTSA at the moment has a plan to establish, uh, I believe, inspection centers in a number of sub-counties. Mm -hmm. So that uh, a motor vehicle that is in Nairobi, leaving Nairobi to uh, Western Kenya, can as well be inspected before it leaves Western, whether it's roadworthy or not. Okay. And now an approach by all of us as Kenyans. If you're using public service vehicles, do not allow a drunken driver to drive you from point A to B. Mm. Raise the alarm and support yourself so that we get it done. We are dealing at the moment with a motion, which I know you, you, you must have all seen uh, along a uh, thicker road, where some conductor was, uh, you know, harassed some passenger lady, who, unfortunately, the report that we have received is a cover-up sort of a report. And this we are calling out NTSA to deal with it because we are not going to let it off. Where we've seen in the cameras glaring, you must, you, 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 this, this, this station must have covered that. And this is a conductor and a driver who are misbehaving on the road, risking the lives of many Kenyans. Yeah. And when someone raises that alarm, few people come out to support. So what I'm saying is, let us support those who are confident enough to raise an alarm yeah. so that we take care of our lives at our personal level and not to the minister. And therefore, it is now, uh, as, as, as Mugonja agreed with me now this time around, that look, this is one of those very unfair uh, uh, comments and, and, and you know, uh, position taken by NCCK to say, look, let the CS, I mean, he's, he's, he's working on a policy in the office. Yeah. A drunken driver is being released and passengers, 14 sit are that are leaving uh, a station to the next. He's completely drunk on phone and people are quiet. What can the CS do? Okay. You've got to be fair. Manzo? Well, well first, of, first of all, if you look at the front page of the nation, you know those innocent children really should not have died. And yeah. um, sure. one of the country's uh, transport network is very well practiced is Rwanda. And also Israel 
the, 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 the fines are very punitive. And, and, and the Rwandese case is that they give you time. First, you are cited, you are, you are over speeding, and then next time you are, you are told to pay, then you are warned, then after that they tow your vehicle. So, so you, you know, it, it reduces a road accident, but they have also made sure that their roads are very good. Now, this particular place where these children died in Salama, you know, for a long time, um, we, we, the leaders of Makuen, including the governor there, Mutula Kelonzo Jr., have stated that we need, at, uh, in that particular area, because it's very notorious, yes. and uh, first of all, it's poorly designed. Any driver who drives through there, by the time you're getting to the rock bottom of, uh, if you're coming from Nairobi to Mombasa, you, 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 you will have a problem if you have to go off the road for one reason or another. And trucks there tend to, you know, to lose their brakes or something happens. <clears throat> and and uh, that, that, that is likely to cause very serious accidents. So we need an urgent action there. Uh, there are no rail bars even to stop any cars from going off the cliff. There's a very big cliff. And we also, you know, you need, you need, you need a, a dual car range in that particular area and several others on that road. While we are aware that uh, the American government wants to work together with the Kenyan government want to do a dual car range to Mombasa, it is as ancient as it can get because uh, that road has really been uh, a death trap. And therefore, the road designs have to be checked again. Uh, and uh, again, also, you remember last weekend, uh, we went to Mutitua Day to bury a young university graduate who was the hope of his family. Again, a university bus involved in an accident where some rains hit. Many drivers, uh, and you know, I think information needs to be passed quite often, that you need to do safari check on a vehicle. You check the bolts, check the brake fluid, check a few things before you take off yeah. into a journey. Uh, and and the, always make sure that your vehicle is in good condition. But again, a lot of people speed in rain. So when you speed in rain, you are likely to lose you know, uh, you're, you're likely to find pools of water, you're likely to lose your brakes, you're likely to, to cause an accident. Again, you know, things like that. When it is rainy, you just drive slowly. You cannot speed, really, in the rains. And again, also, you know, there is an issue of, like, Michuki was successful yeah. in the Michuki rules. You know, safety belts. Uh, saves lives and uh, all these. Many, many passengers get into a vehicle, there's a safety belt there, and they don't want to wear it. Mm. Uh, and then, uh, you know, motorbikes. You see, a lot of passengers have suffered through yeah. motorbikes. They have no helmets. In Rwanda, everybody has an helmet. It should be upon the Kenyan himself to make sure you have an helmet. Yeah. And so I saw that we are manufacturing them here. Why will you ride, even you as uh, you are paid, you are six of you on a motorbike, and none of you have an helmet? And something is likely to happen yeah. uh, on that. So institutions, you know, schools, how can children, you know, uh, die from uh, school transport? Okay. There, there are quite a number of things which I think the minister has to deal with. Yeah. Uh, there's, a lot, there's a lot of corruption. And even with those speed cameras, yeah. when, when you are caught, it is an argument between you and the police. Yeah. Okay. It is your word yeah. against them. Yeah. So I, all you know, uh, Murkomen is uh, my friend, and I think as a lawyer he's been doing very well. But he has also got a lot of challenges in this. He has also played around with NCCK, he, you know, with these churches issues. Uh, the, 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 the church uh, is trying to remove from somewhere near railway. Uh, I, I think that is unfortunate. Okay. Uh, and that is likely to get into trouble <laughs> with the man and God on that one. <laughs> I think we should abandon that.